Welcome back everyone to another episode of Rick's Gadgets. Uh, today, like I said, I was going to continue my part two of my NQTT integration with HomeSeer. Uh, in the last video, I kind of showed you a quick uh, picture of my prototype here. It's a Wemos board with a DHT temperature humidity sensor. Um, here's your individual components. Uh, you can see, you can start off with the, the Wemos D1 Mini. Um, the nice thing about these is it's an ESP chip with a, a Wi-Fi adapter built on, so it just needs USB power and uh, solder your pins on. And these projects allow you to do numerous things. Uh, this here I'm showing is a relay switch. Um, it's connected via your uh, power, ground, and your input. And what you can do is you can control uh, DC or AC currents through this. You can see this one here, it's rated at 10 amps um, for 240 volts. So basically you can have a normally open, normally closed uh, switch. You can use this to splice it in between your power lead to a light, uh, allow you to turn lights off and on just by sending a command to the Wemos and it will control the, the switch. Uh, like I said on my other uh, project I'm using a temperature sensor and this one here is nice because it has the resistors built into it so it's just basically plug the pin from the thermostat temperature into the Wemos board and like you can see here I have to put a, a resistor in between the um, power and uh, control line this is just a little bit easier because they are um, built in you can see on the back side here. It's got the resistors built in and this will give you temperature and uh, uh, Humidity information. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you what I've done to get this uh, Showing the temperature within home seer on a device and this will allow you to run events on that device and have actions taken on it if the values are too high or too low. So I'm going to go over to the uh, panel here and show you the uh, code and how I got this set up. All right, so what I want to do, uh, the first one here, I'm going to show you how I did a relay switch uh, to turn lights off and on with the, the relay switch. And the way you can do that is... Um, as you can see, I've opened up my Raspberry Pi and I've connected. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish a string. Um, and I'm going to define it to home seer testing relay. And I'm going to send a one. Uh, for some reason in the, the Arduino code, it's just easier to do ones and zeros for on and off. Uh, it's one character, one digit uh, commands. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to simulate a published command going out over the network and I'm going to show you on HomeSeer how it looks on HomeSeer and how you will create that device based on this uh, published command coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit this and it's going to go out over the network and we're going to come into the plugins and we're going to go to the NQTT setup and we're going to go to the associations and you can see down here I now have HS testing relay with a value of one and it just came in now if we want to create a device what we want to do is click this box and it's now going to bring up this device box and we can click on here and we can define what we want the the device value to be and we've defined it as a number and I'm just going with the, the manual main defaults here because uh, once I get over to the device view I'll show you how you can change the name um, <clears throat> and what this is going to do is created a device 391 and uh, let's see I was trying to think all right, so let's just go with this. So we're going to close this out, and we're going to go back over to our home screen, and we should see a new device here. Yep, HomeSeer Relay. And 
you can go in here and rename the the, the device name it's, it's whatever you want I'm just I'm just kinda showing you a quick tutorial on this so we're gonna do done and let's go over to the pi here and now we'll send zero in and you see the value has changed so that's how you get a devi device added into HomeSeer. Now let's make this into a switch. So to get the value to have the on off button to the side, you want to go in here and first we want to define the list. Um, in the beginning it only had zero because that's the only one I'd sent in. So I had just, I entered it before I got on, before I started the recording this. Just enter a one and and submit, and it'll give you the zero and the one. And to get the 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 buttons to show, this is what you subscribe to. And if you want it to publish, you got to add the publish string in here as well. So we will do testing and relay. And what this is going to do is it says anything coming in for this topic, um, it's going to update the value. And if you change any of these values, 0 or 1, it's going to relay them, or it's going to publish them out on the, um, the network. And so once this is updated, we can close this out. And now if we go back over to our device menu, we should see a, now we have the 0 and the 1. And that would be representative of your on and off. And I believe we can go in here and change that and we can say off and submit and on and submit and click done and now we got our on off and just to test it out I have subscribed here to that client um, and Let's do an on and see what happens. And there's the one. And we'll do off. And there's the zero. So now we can publish. And so now it's off. Let's go back over here and let's send in the one. And we will see the status change to on. So this is the basic control premise of on and off and it may look like I'm kind of starting uh, in the wrong place I wanted to get the home seer configuration set up first with it sending the zero and the ones um, and once we get that now we're gonna go over and program the Wemos board and what I wanted to, I wanted to start on the relay one uh, just because the codes a little different than the temperature one I'll show you the temperature one but this one was a little more difficult to set up because getting a value to come in is just a matter of publishing it and you can add the device just like you're seeing here with my temperature sensor uh, it's really simple you just display the value to get the on off you have to go through those additional steps and it took a little trial and error for me to get that set right you can see here my first test I, uh, I went through all kinds of iterations just to get it to work and now it's a lot more cleaner just doing the on off with ones and zeros um, so now what I want to do is break over and show you the uh, Wemo setup and what this is going to do is it's going to listen and we're going to I'll show you where to um, put in the the code the device the the publish path so it's listening for these on off commands from HomeSeer or you can do it from your mobile phone. Any way, there, any, there's various ways to communicate with MQTT. And HomeSeer is not one of them. There's clients you can put on your smartphone and you can create custom buttons. So you don't even rely, have to rely on HomeSeer for this as well. But I just wanted to show you the plugin setup because like I said, it was a little difficult. So now let's break over and I will show you the Wemo setup. So on the Adreno setup, you're going to have to have a couple of libraries. Of course, you're going to have the Adreno H library, the ESP8266 uh, Wi Fi, and the pub sub client for the MQTT. 
and we're going to start off these are pretty self-explanatory you're going to put in your network uh, name and password and then you'd want to list your MQTT server port and the username and password you defined in that initial setup video and uh, like I said I'll link to the other video if you're, you're you're just checking this one out I did another one of how to set up an MQTT and get it tied into Homeseer um, so those are those are the values that you set up for the initial installation on the Raspberry Pi uh, these are pretty self-explanatory um, then you're going to come down and we're going to start defining the clients for the Wi-Fi and the pub sub. And here it's going to, first it's going to go through and it's going to check and it's going to try to connect to the Wi-Fi. Then it's going to connect to your MQTT server, make sure everything's checked out and looking good. And if not, it's just going to display the errors. And down here is where we're going to do our subscribe and this is the part that you'd want to change and make sure it matches the name that you have defined in your um, home seer setup the one we just did uh, you want it to match here because it's going to do the same it's going to listen for any uh, commands coming through the HS testing relay uh, folder and if that doesn't match then you're going to start missing commands and this is just saying it's sitting and waiting for a payload to come in. And when the message arrives, you're going to come down here and check. And here, you want it to be, if it's a 1, it's going to turn the value on. Else, it's going to turn it off. And then it loops. And that is it for the code. Um, really straightforward. Um, the only other thing that you will have is this digital write, this D3. Uh, that relates to the number 3 pin on the Wemos board. And it just needs to be hooked up to any of the digital pins. So you're going to supply it with the, the power, ground, and a control. And that's just saying that my control is on D3. It, you can have D4, D5, it's just whichever you have it hooked up to. Uh, you would want to put those values here in the the right command because this is saying turn the relay on turn the relay off um, and that is it for the testing alright one other thing I want to mention is to make sure you've gone into your tools and here um, the board that I'm testing with here is a Wemos D1 Mini Lite there is a difference between the Mini Lite and the D1 Mini um, most of them I've been using is the Wemos uh, D1 Mini, which is this one. But uh, for this one, uh, the board I have hooked up, I'm using the light. So make sure you uh, have the correct board. If not, you'll get an error. Also, let me go back. Um, you want to check your ports. Make sure I'm on COM4. And another thing, sometimes I get uh, errors when I try to flash it it will not flash um, you can have it come in and sometimes I have to flash this say all contents and that way it just erases everything on the the board and does a reflash uh, so if you start getting into errors change this a little bit and see if, if it'll help um, because sometimes I get a memory error and it just it just will not write so once it's all done we're gonna click and we're gonna publish that out and with the this we can also come in and do a serial monitor and when it's compiled and everything runs up it'll put display lines in so if you have trouble and you're not sure what you're getting in just do some um, print lines and just see where you're at in the code and see what's going on and you can see I got an error so let's try it again sometimes these things get finicky try it one more time if not we'll do the erase all contents and we'll try it again that's why I said sometimes they're just it doesn't always quite work the way you expect it to and here we go so you can see just doing it a second time everything worked good so now let's go over here and connecting to the Wi-Fi and it's connected to MQTT
So now once you have it all connected and everything's looking good, what you want to do is uh, get your relay hooked up and just start testing. Um, play with your values, uh, see what your code's doing. Like I said, put displays in and just go get it hooked up to uh, your light switch. And this is um, basically all you have to do for doing a relay with the Wemos. Uh, so the next bit of code I want to show you is how to do a temperature sensor. So here is the temperature sensor code. Almost uh, the same, just a few little differences. You're still going to have your ESP Wi-Fi client, your PubSub client. You're also going to need this DHT uh, library. That way it will include the temperature sensor uh, that you're going to include. And again, you're going to have your Wi-Fi uh, network and password. Define your server, MQTT server, your username and password. And define the uh, topic that you're going to um, subscribe to. So I have two. I'm going to have sensor, to, sensor temperature, sensor humidity. And the next piece uh, would be down here. And it's defining which pin. Here I have my sensor hooked up to D5. Like I said, you can put it on D3, D4, whichever one you want. Uh, you're going to hook it up to the 3.3 volts and the ground and then your, your control pin. So here's where you would define the control pin. Um, the DHT, it comes in two flavors. Uh, you can get an 11 or a 22. The one that I'm using here was a 22. The newer one that I showed you in the video was 11. So once I start using it, I will switch the code over. And let's see, this is just the pin code for the LED. It'll flash the LED and you're gonna subscribe to your client and it's gonna come through and it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna connect, connect to your um, uh, Wi-Fi and then your MQTT and it's gonna check and then it's gonna go into a loop where it will now read your um, temperature uh, and you, your humidity and here um, it comes the temperature it comes in Celsius so you can do uh, the conversion and um, publish it in uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius and here to, to do Fahrenheit you have to set this read temperature to true that will put it into uh, Fahrenheit if you leave it the true and just leave it blank it will read Celsius so depending on what uh, values you want and it's going to come through and it's going to print and your temperature and humidity and it's just going to go through a loop and it will keep doing that uh, and we can come down here uh, that's just setting your uh, LED every time it, it reads on and off. If you want to change the value of how long it reads, you can change here the 1000 times 60. Um, if you want to read every 5 minutes, you know, just keep bumping your value up. It'll read longer because this loop will just keep going you know, for the length of time. And basically run it and compile it and set your sensors up plug it in and it will start reading uh, the network uh, to the MQTT and let me see I'll go in here and since I've already got this one up and running um, I'm not going to uh, flash it here because uh, I don't have anything set up on this so so once you get it set up and you want to see how it's reading uh, you can read it through the uh, through the output window um, through the serial monitor on the, the the Wemos or you can come in here and we will subscribe to the sensor temperature and you can see here it's 68.98 and this will just keep going every several minutes and just keep updating and that's it for setting up a the temperature sensor um, the same thing is once you publish the sensor and humidity on the network, um, you will go back over to HomeSeer and go into your MQTT and setup. 
and you will get down and you will look for your your temperature and your humidity see I don't have the humidity here so let's just go ahead and create that and you can kind of see and let's go in here and check and since it's only receiving I don't have to do a publish and we're just gonna set it to the the value that's coming in so we're just gonna show the value and that should be it and I don't think it was showing correctly I think it's just reading a one um, that one's not picking up right yep sensor humidity it's just reading a one so I think my sensor is bad um, because it's never really worked the temperature is working fine but the humidity just always shows one uh, and that's why I've never really displayed it but I don't care about the humidity um, but that's it that's how you would set up uh, a temperature in in the house so um, I'm gonna create several of these um, I got a couple more Wemos boards and a pack of those sensors um, and just put them around the house and I might do events uh, depending on uh, you know if it gets too cold and we have a bonus room that gets either hot or cold depending on the the summer or winter temperatures that uh, when we're home we may uh, I may say if the temperature is at a certain value um, maybe bump the heat up a little bit more so the kids can go up there and it's not as cold in the room in the same way in the summer but uh, you know if no one's home uh, let it be and if the temperature is kind of within range of what I have my thermostat set on you know leave it the same so uh, you can kind of put parameters in there and see if it's you know within reason maybe you want to up your air conditioner or lower it uh, depending on the values coming in from these additional sensors because you know as you say your thermostats are usually in one part of the house but you can have another room that's always hotter or colder now you can monitor it so anyway I hope you enjoyed these videos if you have any questions or comments uh, leave them below uh, I will put the links to my code uh, in the comments below and link to the, my prior video that I had done part one of this and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I appreciate you checking out my videos and don't forget to give the thumbs up and subscribe thanks and have a great day